with just few moments of meditation. You may close your eyes. Om Namo Arhantanam Om Namo Siddhanam Om Namo Panchanamukkaro Savapavapanasano Mangalanancha Savvesing Padhamang Havai Mangalam Padhamang Welcome to everyone who made the journey to SOAS today in anticipation of the ensuing book launch of Johannes Glatz, Jaina Onomastikon, whose appearance was already announced last year, followed by the 17th annual Jaina lecture to be delivered by Professor Fujinaga Shin, president of the Japanese Society for Jaina Studies, which serves at the, at the same time as the opening lecture of the 19th Jaina Studies Workshop, which this year is dedicated to the interface between Jainism and Buddhism. We are most grateful to all 12 speakers who have made a special effort to come here to inform us all about their latest research findings and to their universities, some of which supported their journey to SOAS. I'm particularly excited about the fact that many speakers came all the way from Japan, where comparative work on Jainism and Buddhism has a very long tradition. Without the generosity of well-wishers, an annual event like the Jaina Studies Workshop could not be sustained. In addition to individual universities sponsoring travel expenses, the main sponsors of this year's conference are the V&A Jaina Art Fund in London, the Jeev Daya Foundation of Dallas, both of which regularly supported our workshops in previous years, the Center of Buddhist Studies at SOAS for the first time, and the family of Dr. Atul Shah, which generously sponsored the Free Jain Vegetarian Conference Lunch tomorrow. <laughs> yes. We also received donations by well-wishers of the COGS who prefer to remain anonymous. On behalf of us all, I would like to thank all the sponsors and speakers, including the session chairs, Dr. Vincent Tournier, Paul Dandas, and Dr. Marie-Hélène Goris, whose presence and contributions are enabling us to keep the annual workshop open to the public without charge and to learn more about the rich heritage of the Jaina tradition. Let us give them all a very big hand. As some of you will have noted already, a significant number of changes in the program, the originally uh, advertised program, which incurred due to unforeseen circumstances. It may be a blessing in disguise, however, that the originally extremely dense program has boiled down to a humane proportion Notably is that though uh, Professor Samani Dr. Kusuma Pragya of the Jaina Vishwabharti Institute in Ladnun cannot be here in person, uh, on her behalf, Samani Pratipa Pragya, I should say Dr. Pratipa Pragya, who just completed her PhD, <laughs> at SOAS, has agreed to read her paper with the revised title 
why the Buddha is missing in the Isipasiyayam. Finally, before handing over to Professor Wright, who will honor this year's winner of the undergraduate Jaina Essay Prize here at SOAS, I would like to point out that as per convention for keynote annual lectures, there will be no public discussion following Professor Fujinaga's lecture. Professor Fujinaga will, however, be available for private discussion at the reception following the annual Jaina lecture, which will be held in the Buenai suite upstairs, to which everyone is invited. So these uh, celebratory lectures are not democratic. <laughs> Let's be absolutely clear about this. <laughs> Um, but before Professor Fujinaga will be introduced by Professor Hampana Nagarajaya from Bangalore, two special accomplishments will have to be celebrated. Um, and that is, um, of course, uh, the Jaina Essay Prize and um, the uh, book launch uh, celebrating uh, Johannes Klatt's work. Last but not least, I would like to thank Jane Savory, who has organized our so far 19 workshops uh, so well with her team and wish her a wonderful year on maternity leave in the hope that she will come back afterwards. Um, can we give a big hand to her as well, please? <laughs> I hope the conference will be an enjoyable experience for everyone and would like to call up uh, Professor Wright now to uh, honor our undergraduate prize winner. Unfortunately, our honored prize winner is precluded from coming tonight, but his sister has agreed to come and accept the certificate on his behalf. Uh, please do so. <laughs> so for a, a very careful and very accurate uh, undergraduate essay on uh, comparison and contrasting of the codes of conduct for giant mendicants and laity, uh, the, the, un, the prize is awarded to Daniel Johnson by proxy. Remain. Um, now we, we do this little uh, ceremony in honor of uh, Johannes Klatt, and I would like to call upon all the uh, participants in this little ceremony, the two summonees, who will receive uh, um, something <laughs> in a minute, and uh, Professor Hampana Nagarajaya, uh, Dr. Cornelius Krumpelmann, and Dr. Renate Söhne-Thiemel. What it all means, I will say in a minute. This is all choreographed to produce a wonderful photograph, uh, publishable. <laughs> yes, this will be a very short introductory speech and then we will move forward. As fate would have it, two of the main works in China studies composed in the second half of the 19th century would not be published during their author's lifetimes. Ernst Leumann's work, Übersicht über die Awashiaka Literatur, was edited and brought to the press by his disciple, his disciple Walter Schubring in 1934, three years after the author's death. It is only now, more than 124 years after Johannes Klatt's death, that a print edition of his monumental China Onimasticon is made public to the scholarly world. The name of Johannes Emil Otto Klatt, 1852 to 1903, classical and oriental philologist, custodian at the Königliche Bibliothek in Berlin, and I should give you an impression. <laughs> How can I flick it forward? Um, okay, here we have him. Um, has he has uh, custodian at the Königliche Bibliothek, the Royal Library in Berlin, and pioneer of Jaina studies, has almost entirely disappeared from the records of 19th century intellectual history. 
despite the fact that between 1873 and 1892, as librarian and bibliographer, he became one of the pivotal figures in Oriental studies. Klatt was one of a handful of scholars coalescing around his teacher, Albrecht Weber, 1825 to 1901, of the Friedrich Wilhelms University in Berlin, who together with Georg Bühler, 1837 to 1898 in Surat and Vienna, effectively established China studies as an academic field. Not only is Klatt not recognized as, a sta as standing among the major German Indologists of the 19th century, as Nalini Valbier writes, he's not mentioned in any of the many recent studies on the history of Oriental research, not even in those dedicated to the history of Indology in Germany, few of which touch on China studies at all. Histories of the Royal Library at Berlin, where Klatt occupied a prominent position for 20 years, also take note of his existence. At the occasion of the posthumous publication of Klatt's magnum opus, now available in print, the Gina Onomasticon, which Walter Schubring repeatedly praised as one of the principal accomplishments of 19th century Gina research, the time has come to rediscover its author and his still relevant work, not merely for posterity, but also as a paragon and tool for the ongoing exploration of South Asian history and culture. Klatt's encyclopedic compilation of literary bibliographical information on Jaina authors, texts, and places remains without parallel. The text of the Jaina Onomasticon offers more bi biobibliographical information than any other comparable work to date and will serve as an invaluable resource for future research in China history and culture. Johannes Klatt's China Onomasticon is a historical document and is published as such. It reflects the state of the art of Jaina studies in 1892, but it is by no means out of date. The advantage for the historian of intellectual history is that the emergence and development of China studies as a field of inquiry is documented in as much detail as possible in the text and can be unlocked, especially if it is used in conjunction with the various annual reports on Oriental studies, which Klatt and others produced well into the 1880s. Klatt himself never visited India, and there's no evidence that he ever corresponded with any member of the Jaina community. He belonged to a generation of Indologists, a relatively new name, term, who defined themselves foremost as classical and Sanskrit philologists, or as scholars of comparative linguistics or the study of classical antiquity. Class academic degrees were in philology and the official diplomas in philosophy. In conjunction with the Jaina Onomasticon, the surviving letters of Johannes Klatt were published in the Berliner Indologische Studien. The microhistorical gaze at the minutiae of the work-filled life of one of the significant figures in the academic network of Oriental studies in the 19th century, which they permit us, tells us a lot about the general history of the field as a whole. The details of Klatt's routines and working methods of general interest for intellectual history they offer a glance into the ways in which normal science was conducted in the 19th century by a civil servant engaged in Oriental studies and also how information was processed in the Royal Library in Berlin, the Prussian Imperial Library, at a time of exponential influx of published and unpublished data from all over the world. The study of the networks of teachers and colleagues with whom Klatt interacted regularly also offer a key for the reconstruction uh, of the pivotal role that Klatt played as a bibliographer and compiler of information from previously unconnected sources in the 19th century, 19th century Europe and India. If Johannes Klatt's life and work teaches us anything 
about the history of Jaina studies as a specialized field of academic inquiry and indeed of Oriental studies as a whole, it is this. Rather than being driven by political or ideological agendas, the academic study of the Jaina tradition was developed in the pursuit of knowledge as a unique craft whose difficult mastery was motivated by the old fashioned values of duty and honor. The editors, that is myself and Dr. Cornelius Krümpelmann, are indebted to the ASEAN Africa Institute of the Universität Hamburg, which entrusted the handwritten manuscript of Johannes Glatz, Jan Jaina Onomastikon, for almost six years to them for the purpose of editing. And that is the original manuscript. Without Leverhulme Trust Research Grant so-and-so, however, covering the period from October 2013 until February 2016, Johannes Klatz's magnum opus would still lie unpublished. Last but not least, the three advisors to the project are to be thanked for their vital input. Professor J.C. Wright, honorary president of the Center of Jaina Studies at SOAS, whose good counsel was invaluable. Dr. Renate Sön Thieme of SOAS, uh, and Professor Wilhelm Boulay of the University of Heidelberg, and of course, Harasovitz Publishers for their excellent work. It is our great pleasure to present on behalf of Johannes Klatt one copy each of his work to Samani Dr. Pratibha Pragya and Samani Unata Pragya of the Jaina Vishwabharti Institute in Ladnun, and one copy to Professor Hampana Nagarajaya of the National Institute of Prakrit Studies and Research at Shravana Belagola, two of the most important Jaina research centers in India. For the group photograph, uh, we have all uh, stood up here, and now let us proceed first with Dr. Krumpelmann presenting. Uh, please go. The old Indian way. Is that better? So now I hand over to Professor Nagarajaya. <laughs> what should I do now? You introduce uh, right now? Yes. <laughs> I have so many pockets I have to search. Ah. 
ತ್ರಿಲೋಯ ಸಬ್ಬ ಜೀವಾಣ ಹಿಯಂ ಧಮ್ಮೋವ ದೇಶಿಣ ಒಡ್ಡಮಾಣ ಮಹಾವೀರ ವಂದಿತ್ತ ಸಬ್ಬ ವೇಯಿಣ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಪೀಟ್ ಭೃಗ ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೆಷರ್ ಇನ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದಿ ಲರ್ನೆಡ್ ಆಡಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಒನ್ ರೀಸನ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಇಫ್ ದೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ನೋ ಸ್ಕೋಪ್ ಫಾರ್ ಈಸ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಟು ಡೆಲಿವರ್ ಎ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಪೀಟರ್ ವುಡ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಟು ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ದಿ ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆನರ್ ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ದಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಐ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಟು ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ಲೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಸ್ಟೀಮ್ಡ್ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಫೂಜಿ ದಾಗಾಶಿ ಹೂ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ನೀಡ್ಸ್ ನೋ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಅರ್ಲಿ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟೆಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಜುಯೇಷನ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಕುಮಮೌಟೊ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ನೇಮ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದಿ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೌನ್ ವೇರ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಮೈ ಬರ್ತ್ ಇಂಟರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ಲಿ ಹಿಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ಲಾಸಿಬ್ಲಿ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಲವ್ ಈಸ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಮೈ ಸಿಂಪತೀಸ್ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಂಟರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ಲಿ ಮೈ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪಾಸಿಬ್ಲಿ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಎನಿಮಿ ಈಸ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಡೆಸ್ಪೈಟ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಅಟ್ ಕ್ರಾಸ್ ರೋಡ್ಸ್ ಐ ಲೈಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೈ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ವೆನ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಕೀನ್ ಇನ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೈಯರ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇನ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಲಕ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ದಿಮ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ರಾನ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಯಾನ್ ಹೂಜಿ ನಾಗಾವ್ ಆಸ್ ಎ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಬೈ ದ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಹಿ ರೀಚ್ಡ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟಡೀಡ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಗುಜರಾತ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಅಹಮದಾಬಾದ್ ಸಬ್ಸಿಕ್ವೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಹಿ ಒಬ್ಟೈಂಡ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹಿರೋಶಿಮಾ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ವಿತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಚೈನೀಸ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಆಸ್ ಮೈನ್ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯೂರಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ಹಿ ಒಬ್ಟೈಂಡ್ ಪಿ ಎಚ್ ಡಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಸೇಮ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ತ್ರೀ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸೇಮ್ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಚೈನೀಸ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಫೂಜಿ ನಾಗಾ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಎ ಮೆಂಬರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟಾಫ್ ಇನ್ ಜನರಲ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಮಿಯಾ ಕೊನಾಜಿ ಕೊನಾಜೊ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಫೋರ್ ಆಸ್ ಎ ಸೀರಿ ಸೀರಿಯಸ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಜೈನ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಹೀ ಈಸ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಟಿವ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ವಾಲ್ವ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರಮೋಟಿಂಗ್ ಜೈನ್ ಸ್ಟಡೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಪೈರಿಂಗ್ ಯಂಗ್ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಜಪಾನ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಫೋಕಸ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟಡೀಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಏನ್ಷಿಯಂಟ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ವಿಸ್ಡಮ್ ಎನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೈನ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಜೈನ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿಕಲ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ no wonder that the theory of sadvada has attracted him we all know that it is butta akalanka saint scholar and dialectician has rightly defined sadvada as the banner of jain philosophy shrimad parama gambhira sadvada amogha lanchanam jiyat trilokya natasya shasanam jina shasanam may the doctrine of jina be victorious the doctrine of the lord of three worlds the unfailing characteristic of which is the glorious and most profound sadvada the doctrine of qualified assertion yes as fire is known by smoke and sea by water jainism is known by the sadvada the doctrine of qualified assertion one who has a fair knowledge of sadvada will be impartial and will respect other religions sadvada vidyate yasmin pakshopapato na vidyate it is meaningful that he is also the president of the society for jain studies in kyoto japan he is one of the associate members of this center of jaina studies sois he has authored books and articles which include the omniscience of jainism in published in 2001 
and about 50 research papers on various topics published in international journals. I take this opportunity to place on record my sweet memory of our friendship. We have met and shared common platform in several international seminars. Delhi, Kolkata, Lumbini in Nepal, National University Seoul, South Korea, etc. He was kind to visit my house in Bangalore with his friends and we spent valuable time at Shravana Belgola also. I gratefully recall his dear daughter's help who took me around Tokyo. Friends, there is a common rhythm in our personal names. He is Fuzinaga and I am Hampanaga. Once again, I welcome philosopher Fuzinaga. My inspiration was such that I wanted to take rather talk minimum two hours. But wisdom warned me that I am supposed to be a follower of, a follower of Ahimsa, non-injury. Since I am short, I decided to make my speech shorter. In, in fact, small is beautiful. Look at me. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for sparing your time. Fujinaga. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Hampa Nagarajaya, for your kind introduction. And uh, good evening, old audience. Uh, uh, Professor Hampa Nagarajaya said we have uh, two, one common thing, it's a name, both of us are Naga, but uh, I think uh, in my idea, he's a uh, Big Naga, and I'm small Naga. <laughs> but uh, I'm, in, in a sense, very happy Naga, because my name is Fujiya Naga. So, and uh, tonight, uh, I'm going to s talking about uh, Nidana. Uh, Many of you are very familiar with this word because in Hindi or in Gujarati also, you may use this word, nidan. And uh, this word is used in both Buddhists and Jain. But uh, so far, uh, very little are known to us about this term, especially in in Jainism, and uh, I'm very thankful to Professor Peter Frugel, who kindly invited me to this lecture. And so, uh, uh, as all of you know, Buddhism and Jainism, like a twin brother, born in the same country and brought up in the different areas have a similarity in their basic ideas and practices. They deny that this universe is created and controlled by a supreme one and they maintain that what happened to a person is the result of his or her own activity in the past. Moreover, in the both tradition, monks and nuns fundamentally spend mendicant life. They also share a lot of terms or phrases in Prakrit as well as uh, Sanskrit. It is very natural because both are from the, the same soil of Mother India. Such a parallel usage, so to speak, has been studied by scholars in various countries, including Japan. Some of the terms, however, are used in a different way to show the divergence between the two cultural traditions. This has also attracted the attention of the scholars of Jainism. Today, we are going to explore one of such terms, that is Nidana in Sanskrit and uh, 
as well as in Pali and Nyana in Prakrit. Uh, Professor P.S. Jaini, one of the most eminent scholars in our days and well versed both in Jainism and Buddhism, points out different usage of the word Nidana in the two traditions. He imports the diversity of the meaning. Buddhists use this mainly in the sense of causes. In Jainism, the word holds a specific meaning, bothering of the penance. Hence, to the negative concept, the word holds. He also notes the Bodhisattva in Buddhism can't be uh, possible in Jainism because of the idea expressed by this term. To my knowledge, any complete research on the Jaina usage of this term has not yet been carried out so far. This lecture will show the outline of the, this topic as follows. First, lenses of the text in which Nidana appear. Second, a context of usage of the word. We fully understand that the word Nidana, which is the main theme of the, this lecture, is used not exclusively by the Buddhist and the Jain, but also appears in the Brahmanica text. For example, in some texts of the Brahmana, we come across, come across this word. Today, however, let us concentrate ourselves on examining the Buddhist and Jain text. First, Buddhist text. The Buddhists use this word in their various texts written in Pali and Sanskrit. Among them, the oldest usage may be that in Stanipata. In the fifth part of the second chapter, a Yaksha addresses to the Buddha and the latter answers as follows. Here, Ragacha dosa kto nidana. Oh, this. Uh, Ah, Narati Rati Roma Hamsa Ktoja Ragocha Dosa Itoni Dana Anton. This is uh, Stanipata verse 2701. Uh, this verse is mean, I think, uh, from what? From what? Lust and hate arise. From what? Like and dislike and fear arise. From itself cause lust and hate and so on. Here, what nidana means a cause which makes lust and hate arise. We understand this meaning of nidana more clearly in another Buddhist Pali text called Maha Nidana Sutta. In this text, another a disciple of uh, Buddha declares to his teachers that. The cause and effect relationship, uh, Samupada, is wonderful and deep, but is very clear for him. To this, Buddha persuades his young student not to say so and explains the true meaning of the relationship through the dialogues with him. Having Anand understand the relationship between birth and aging death, Buddha says, This phrase appears in Mahanidana in various places, more than 10 times, I think. With a different co uh, combination and cause and effect. In this context, word Nidana is clearly meant a synonym of Hetu and Samudaya and Pachaya. 
all these words mean something which uh, makes others arise. So we conclude that here the Nidana means cause, origin, or source. As a whole, uh, this sutra teaches that all the things in this world have their causes and they themselves are effect or result of the other things. In other words, everything is conditional and absolute or eternal, and not absolute or eternal. This consists of the main parts of the Buddha's te teaching. So Nidana plays a, one of the important roles in Buddhism. It is also important that in Buddhism, the word Nidana itself means something neutral. The idea expressed or indicated by this word is neither to be avoided nor to adopt it. Like a concept in science, it is value-free. So now let us study the Nidana in Jain text. Uh, first, uh, we check uh, usage in canonical text. In, and as you know, uh, there are so many Jain canonical texts. So among them, uh, first, let me pick up uh, an older or senior one. That is Acharangas and Uttaradiana Sutras. At the very beginning of the sixth chapter of Acharanga, it is said that in this world, a wise man preaches a road to the liberation, but someone can't understand and can't lead to the condition. To illustrate this, one example is given, it read, Banjaga Iba Sanibe Sam no Chayam Ti Ebam Anega Rube Him Jaya Rube Him Satta Karnam Tanam Ti Nya No Te Na Lambam Ti Mokam. Herman Yakobi translated this as this as the tree of as the trees does not leave their place through the shaken by storms and so on. Thus, men born in the various families cry bitterly because they are at attached to the object of the senses. On account of their sinfulness, they do not reach liberation. Here, uh, Nidana clearly refers to the, the something which obstructs one's way to liberation. On this portion, Sri Lanka comment and paraphrase this word as upadana karma. This interests us because in Buddhism, the term upadana means a special cause of the reincarnation. In another part of Acharanga, the word nidana appears twice with the negative prefix a in the same Phrase. It reads, J ni Buddha, Pabe him, Kame him, Anya na te, Bia hiya. As Professor Enomoto from Osaka University points out, this phrase, has, this phrase has been misunderstood so far. Following the, the explanation of uh, commentator, we understand this in this manner. Those who are calm are said to have no nidana on bad karmas. Here, nidana means something wrong which causes bad effect to someone, especially passion like anger. Uh, besides Acharanga, we have uh, another earlier giant canon which co uh, contains the word Nidana. 
That is Uttara Jnana Sutra. In this sutra, the word Nidana is used several times. For our study, the most important portion must be the 13th chapter, which narrates the story of Chit and Sambhuta. This story is very famous because, as the Professor Lohiman suggested more than 100 years ago, three main trends of or sources of Indian culture, that is Jainism and Buddhism and Hinduism, has their own works which tell the long history of two brothers, Chit and Sambhuta. We have no time to discuss the story itself, so let us concentrate ourselves on the word Nidana. The very first verse of the chapter 13 reads, In this way, Jai Pareja e Karu Kasi Nianam to Hatina Pra Mi Charuni Air Bamba that to Waban no Pauma Guma O. And uh, again, uh, Yakobi translated this verse in this way, being contemptuously treated for the sake of his verse as a Chandara. Some Buddha took in Hastinapura the single resolution to become a universal monarch in some later birth. Descending from the heavenly region, Padma Guruma, he was born a Chirad in Champidia as a Brahmadat. Then, Kamma niyana payadi tumme rai vichinti ya teesin parabibhage na vipagamunga bhagaya. And Yakobi translation is, karma is produced by the single thought and you have entertained them. O king, it is by the influence of the karma that we have separated. And Verse 28. Again, uh, Yakobi translation. O Chitra, in Hastinapura, I saw the powerful king Sanat Kumar, and I took a single resolution in my desire for sensual pleasures. And this bus, though it does not contain the word Nidana, it is important because it shows relationship between Nidana with uh, penis. I read the text. Tassa me apadikat tassa ima earisam param janama no bi jam damam kama boges muchi o. And since I did not repent of it, this has come of it that I shall long for the sensual pleasures, though I know the law. Here, in these verses, we understand several important points in the term of the Nidana. Among them, the following two are worthy of the special attention. First, sorry. First, the idea of Nidana in this context should be regarded as one of the causes which make efforts such as rebirth. This forms uh, con contrast with the usage of this word in Buddhism, which means, as we have seen before, a cause in general. Second, the whole chapter including these four verses from the narrative telling the dogmatic theme of Jainism. This must have a close relationship with another canonical text, which we are going to discuss soon, and must have 
exerted influence on the later works in which the idea Nidana plays a major role. Now, for our in investigation of the Nidana, let us take another canon, that is Achara Dasa. Because the last chapter of the, this text fully describes uh, Nidana. Among the canon, this text belongs to the subgroup called Cheda Sutra, which deal with the monastic di discipline. As the title suggests, this text consists of 10 chapters. Achara Dasha, Dasha means 10, as you know. So, the first seven chapters uh, prescribe the monastic discipline. And this chapter has a famous, another name, Karpa Sutra. It's a very famous because most of uh, Shibetambara Jain use read this text uh, during the, uh, the, during the uh, pollution. And ninth is uh, on karma. And the tenth chapters again contain ten story on Nidana. Besides our Nidana, this text contains many elements or peculiar points which attend our attraction of scholars. First of all, no famous monks or scholar in ancient or medieval times in India wrote commentary on this text in Sanskrit. As a fundamental canon, such as Anga or Upanga, or even other texts belong to the Cheda Sutra has have, have been explained by the various monks in the form of Vritti or Tika. So far, we have no idea about this absence of good commentary. But this may be one of the reasons for the lack of the study on this text by the modern scholar inside as well as outside of India. To our knowledge, the only study on this, if we may call it a study, is Walter Schubring's brief introduction to his edition and note on text. That's Schubring's edition of Dor included in Dorai Cheda Sutra and this Jaina Kanon, Ayara Dasao Babahara Nishiha. It's published in 1963. And Here's another uh, book uh, by uh, Dr. Natmar Tatiya and Muni Mahendra Kumar, which translates some chapters of this text in the, the name is uh, Aspect of Jain Monarchism, published from Radunun at 1981. The second uh, peculiarity of this text is uh, this unity of the, its context. As we have seen above, here, this canon uh, can be divided into two parts. First, the, this seven chapters, and this First part, portion is deal with the monastic discipline, and uh, this portion has some uh, unity because the, all of the seven uh, deal with monastic rule, but the the rest three has no uh, unity. So this makes us uh, presume that these three chapters have been added 
to the preceding seven to make the number 10 as a whole. Such a procedure may have been required because there, there are other canonical texts which consist of 10 chapters. Anyway, Acharya Dasha provides us with important material for our investigation of Nidana. Now let us have a look at the context of the 10th chapter, which narrates a dogmatic story. We have two versions of this story. One is a long, long one and a shorter one. Here we adopt the shorter one. I mean, edited by Shuping. The tenth story in the, chap uh, the tenth chapter again contains the tenth sub story. Uh, sorry, uh, the tenth chapter again contains ten sub story and the first nine concern Nidana and the ninth. Uh, and the tenth, that is the last one, narrate Anidana. So we can't co uh, clearly divide one story from the other in some part. Let us follow this discrimination. Main character of the first and the second story are Jai monks and nun who happen to observe King Senia and his queen, Chelana, uh, spending a happy life with gorgeous ornament and a lot of attendance. Then they thought in their mind. Uh, I'll skip, skip, skip the text. And the English translation of portion must be in this way. If there's a special result of the penance, regulation, chastity, and preserving, then we will also enjoy various enjoyment of human beings. That is good. This kind of thought is called Nidana by Mahavira. He continued to talk. Such a mendicants, having done a Nidana without confession and atonement, will be born as a god and be born as a member of good family. But they will not be able to listen to the Dharma. In the third story, a monk worried about his life as a man and want to be a, want to be born as a woman, while in the post, a nun expresses difficulty of her womanhood and desire to be a man. This worriness and desire are also called nidana. Thus, even if they will be reborn as a god or a goddesses without confession and atonement and enjoy their life in the heaven, they can't believe the preaching of the omniscient one. What is for the next three stories, that is the fifth, sixth, and the seventh, is not completely clear. The outline of it, however, understood in this way. I skip the, the text. With or without difficulties, the person abandoned much of food and thought fasting food with confession and reflection in the state of concentration and the period of time the person ends his or her life. This is also a bad result of Nidana because the person remaining as a lay, layman, lay follower, not a, a mendicant. Eighth and ninth stories tell that even the mendicant who observed the fasting and practices med meditation at the end of his life, after confession and reflection, will suffer from the pain of the incarnation if the, the mendicant has a nidana. To the contrary, the tenth story des describes the 
practice without nidana, a mendicant practices on the way to liberation without any desire and attachment. When the such mendicant has no nidana, then he or she will acquire the perfect knowledge and belief. I mean, kebarabara uh, nidana dansana. And these mendicants end their life fasting to attain the perfection. The last part of the 10th story reads, I again also skip the text. Uh, having listened to, the, to this near the Mahavira, many of the Jaina mendicants saluted and bowed to him. They reflected and confessed the state and regretted as well as censured themselves. Again, they left and purified the state to decide not to do. Then they practiced the penance of atonement and atonement according to each ability. With these 10 stories, we learned a lot of about the nidana. First, nidana is a thought which brings a bad effect. In Prakrit or Sanskrit, it's called papa or papa para in the next life. Second, in terms of result and person, there are various kinds of nidana, and mendicant as well as lay person may have nidana. And the result caused by nidana is not absolutely bad. One may be born to a good family or a mendicant even if he or she makes nidana in previous life. Nature common to all kinds of nidana is that it's called the reverse and hinders the liberation. Another important point which we learned from the, this story is that nidana leads us to the reverse we do not confess it and practice atonement prior to for it. This suggests that even if we continue to nidana, it will not be effective when we admit the fact in public and follow the due procedure. Because of this nature, nidana is discussed in the two kinds of texts. The one is a canonical text which deal with the this procedure in Jain monarchism, and uh, this may be a re reason that this chapter is included in the text Achara Dasa. As we have seen above, uh, a canon of rules for the Jain mendicant. The other is a text deal with the behavior of lay person or Shravak Achara. This means that Nidana concern all cat categories of Jaina followers. Now let us go to the uh, other canonical text. Uh, as we, we suggested above, other canonical texts also deal with the topic of Nidana. They are on the one hand, texts concerning the monastic rules, and the others are texts of encyclopedic character. Most uh, among the uh, former group, let us pick up Burihad Kalpa Sutra with commentary on it. Strictly speaking, in this sutra, uh, we come across the Nidana only once. But in the commentary, Many verses discuss this idea. At the almost last part of the whole text, the author declares the six elements which destroy the rules for the mendicant conduct. Here, Vidya Niyana Karane Mokka Magasta Parimantu Sabbetta Bhagavatta Aniyana Pasatta. The very last part of the whole Bhagavad, we have the Bhagavad, uh, Sutra. This portion can be translated into English this way. 
Desire for obtaining something is the destroyer of the path to liberation. To have no desire for anything is pride by the blessed one. Here, uh, Nidana is said to a cause of destroying one's way to final goal. Thus, it can take place at any stage of the way, even at the very beginning or at the place just before the goal. In other words, a mendicant as well as a lay follower must be careful of Nidana. Even mendicant who is on the way to liberation in advance of lay follower may commit this fault. Commentaries this explain this part of Sutra in some detail as follows. I quote uh, Brihad Kalpa Sutra Basha 6333. Can be understood in this way. If one practices without a desire for obtaining, then the person will reach liberation. If the person could not obtain the state or a state and remaining in the same condition, then a torment for the short one month should be observed. Even if obtained, the person will reincarnate. Therefore, the practice with desire is excellent. The object which a person wants to get through the Nidana is, according to the sub-commentary on this basha, both concrete one and abstract one. The former means uh, delicious food and so on, while the latter includes the status of king, emperor, or even jina. We learn that such state acquired through the Nidana is not regarded a good one. Among the Jaina canonical texts, we have two encyclopedic works, that is Stananga Sutra and uh, Samabhayanga Sutra. These texts classify the subject matter on a numerical standard. I mean, uh, for example, four types of mendicants or uh, 12 angas and so on. In them, we find Nidana by itself and uh, as a part of compound. Among them, Nidana Marana, in the Sutra 113 and Nidana Sharia Sutra 188, which means that death taking place just after Nidana and Nidana painful like a son, respectively. These two attract our attention because they seldom appear to our knowledge in the other canonical texts, and we come up with them in the later texts written in Sanskrit as well as. Another text. So this much is a uh, uh, nidana in canonical uh, text. So now we are going to uh, Sanskrit text. The Tathagata Sutra is a compendium of Jaina doc doctrine authorized by all the sect because various Jaina philosophers write a commentary on it. In this text, the author Umasbati uses the word nidana twice in two contexts. One is nidana by itself. In uh, Shubetambara edition, uh, chapter 9 uh, and Sutra 34, in Digambara edition 33, and once as a part of the compound nidana karana. In addition, uh, a so-called auto commentary uses the word in another place. And natu naturally, commentators explain them in their ways. Let us study the, these three, three in uh, sutra wise. The first nidana in the auto commentary on sutra 
seven sat satin. This sutra says uh, the one who holds discipline has no soul. Nixias Nixias Bruti. To this, the old commentary explained. Maya Nida na Mitsuya Dabeta na Sharia Iki Suribiki Jiukto Nixreas. One who has no soul means a person who refrains from the three souls, religion, nidana, and non belief. And Parvata uh, Siddhi by Kuya Pada uh, in Digambar position on this uh, sorry, uh, Sutra 7.18 says, Nidana Nisaya Boga Akansha. This means Nidana is desire to enjoy object. This desire is, is very important in discussion of Nidana, I think. I'll touch this, word, this portion again uh, afterward. Uh, this explanation by the both sides are very simple, but from this, we understand the various points on Nidana. First, the, here Nidana is told in relation to the Brata or Bao. This Bao concerns the mendicant as well as lay person because the following sutra says that observer of discipline is the mendicant and householder. Agarya anagarya sutra. Second, Nidana referred to here is the state or, or mind or thought of a person, but not a concrete object because the old commentary put it along with the delusion and long live, and because Kujiapada clearly says that it is a desire. This desire, according to Pujapada is aimed at the real matter, Vishaya. Next, Nidana in this context is metaphorically expresses a soul, Sharia. According to the Pujapada, the original word means something which gives us a pain mentally as well as physically, as a soul gives a pain when we got it in our body. The second reference in, uh, to the Nidana occurs in the Sutra uh, 732 in the Shibetambara version and 37 in uh, Digambara version. Jirita, Marana, and Satan, Mitra, and Rana, Tsuka, and Ban, Dakta, Nidana, Ni. Desire for the living and death, attachment to the friends, remembering of the past pleasure, and Nidana are translation for the Sarvekana bow. Here, Vasubhati and Pujapada explain the Nidana as one of five translations of, of Sarvekana. The old commentary says nothing more, and Pujapada's explanation here is slightly different from previous one. As we have seen before, on the Sutra 7, 18, he says, Nidana Vishaya Boga Anksha. Here, his explanation reads, uh, here, Boga Anksha Sutra, Nidana Vishaya Boga Anksha Sutra, Nidana Vishaya Boga Anksha Sutra, 
difference between the two explanations by pleasure further since slide. The former refers to desire for pleasure from all objects and the latter to the desire for pleasure in general. This makes, however, nidana of two kinds, that in daily life and that at the end of life. In daily life, both mendicant and lay person may have various kinds of desire to various objects such as delicious food, good social position, and it may give us pain like a stone in our body. This kind of nidana is mentioned in commentary on Sutra 713 or 718. Nidana in Sutra 632 or 37 is that is at the time of term, terminating one's life by fasting. In this occasion, desire of real object is out of question, but one must be very careful not to have a desire concerning one's next life. A man observing Sarlekana should avoid the thinking of being born as a king and so on by the effect of his or her tapas. Shidasena Gani, a commentator of Masubati's auto commentary, explained this as follows. Nidanam, Abakandanam, Tapascha, Charitrasya, Ba, Yadi, Asya, Tapasto, Mama Asti, Haram, Sato, Jamma, Antare, Chakrabarti, Tian, Alda, Barata, Ali, Hati, Mahaman, Man, Dikas, Subago, Dupa, Ban, Iti, Ali. Nidana is a destroyer of the sinners or like conduct in the form of thought such as, if you sinners of mine have a desire, then I'll be an emperor in the next verse or a king of Havbarata or a governor of the right province in happiness and good shape. We found here that this nidana at the end of life has closely related with tapas or penance. In daily life of mendicant or lay person, we may have some desire and it will make us pain like a song. Such a nidana should be prohibited because it hurt us. Nidana at the end of sarlekana is pro prohibited and blamed because as we, as we know, or well, Shidasena says it destroys the tapas. But why does the Nidana destroy the tapas? The Jaina have two kinds of tapas, outer one and the inner one. The inner one and inner tapas consists of atonement, modesty, service, Service to other study, giving up one's body and meditation. First, yeah, the third and the last sutra on Tatva Sutra, uh, which contains the word nidana, is very simple. It reads nidana cha. This much sutra we can't understand the what means, but. Uh, Previous sutra read Alta Raudra Dharma Shukrani. This means mournful and lustful and wrongful and pure. Here, uh, auto commentary reads in this way Kama Upahata Chitta Nam, Tonal Baba Vishaya, Tuka Gridda Nam, Nida Nam, Alta Dia Nam Bhavati. Mournful meditation in the form of Nidana occurs to the person whose mind is hurt by sexual desire and caught in the pleasure of objects in the next life. Puja Pada explained this in the slightly different ways. Uh, Boga, uh, anxious, triasya, 
anagatta vishaya praptim prati manak pranidanam samkarpas cinta prabandak turiyam artam nidanam iti uchiyate. To the, the one who is suffering from the desire for pleasure, the fourth mon mournful meditation called Nidana take place in the form of concentrating of mind towards the object of obtaining of the object in the future and every thought as well as continuous idea. Both Umasbati and Pujapada agreed on the asserting that the desire in the life, in this life and the future makes nidana of a person. But Umasbati limited the former to sexual de desire, while Pujapada take it widely. This attitude of Masvati towards the Nidana in meditation reminds us of the story narrated in Achara Dasha, chapter 10, story 5, 6, and 7, where God has sexual desire, and as a result, they, would, they will be born as a human being again. Not only human beings, is a mendicant or a lay person, but also God may practice the meditation in the upper world. If we fail to, to do it properly, that is, if we do it and every thought on our life, then uh, meditation does not lead us to the liberation. Thus, we must practice it with, with the best care and attention. Uh, this much is uh, Nidana in Tatvata Sutra. So, next, uh, let me talk about the Nidana in the later non-canonical text. Uh, besides uh, these canonical texts and dogmatical texts, we come across the word and idea Nidana in various kinds of works in Jainism. For example, Kubaraya Mara, a champu composed by with the Yotana in 779 contains some na narratives concerning Nidana. However, here uh, we pick up the work called Samurai Chakaha, written by Hadbadra before the uh, Kubaraya Mara. This narrative has been widely studied even outside India since Herman Jacobi edited and published the text with copious introduction and appendix earlier in 1926 as the volumes of Biblioteca Indica. Here, let us check the Nidana in this work with the help of Jacobi. Samurai Chakha uh, is classified as a Dharma Kaha by the author mainly narrates the uh, nine births of two persons in the nine chapters. This means that the two jivas reincarnate eight times and they have some relationship with each other in every birth. The origin of the story is narrated in the first chapter. There are Crown Prince Gunasena and the son of king's priest, Agni Sharman. They grown up to a king and, <coughs> sorry, and ascetics respectively. Once Agni Sharman get anger when his sink are neglected in the king's palace. Chapter, <laughs> 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 
Kobe, uh, summer this portion in this way, and this thought inflamed his hatred towards the king to such a degree that he uh, uttered an uh, awfully resolve in Ghana, we are have a acquired the merit by keeping my vow, may I then uh, be born again and again to kill him in every one of his vows. This attracts our attention again <laughs> in various point. First, the person who has Nidana here is not a giant, but a Brahmanical ascetic living in wood as Jacobi knows. Thus, at least Hadibadra thinks the Nidana can occur to non giant too. Of course, intention of Hadibadra here must be to point out that Nidana is a bad thought which should be avoided by the giant. Therefore, he may have made a, a non giant character at, at Nidana. Even then, we understand that Nidana, in, Nidana is not a peculiar to a giant. And through this resolve, one may repeat incarnation many times. This point is suggested in the, some chapters of the Achara Dasaha, but here it also expresses the last, lasting effect of Nidana. Because of this, we must be very careful not to have this kind of thought. Otherwise, a, a single comet of Nidana would lead us to the long journey of Sansara. In another part of this narrative, that is the six chapters, two kind of Nidana are explained in this way. Nidana said, Nidana is of two kinds, uh, that related to this world and that to the next world. world. The former is disorder of wind and others caused by engaging unsuitable things, while the latter is the result of bad karma. The former can take a place without the latter. Thus, the latter should be avoided. Uh, this kind of dichotomy does not appear in the canonical text, at least. Any text does not mention this explicitly. And here, Haribadra regards Nidana related to the, this word or this bus as a kind of physical disease or disturbance of humors. And he says that it is caused by harmful selves, while Nidana related to the next word is just bad karma. Thus, this distinction seems to be based on the, their result. Uh, it should be not noted here that Nidana is explained with medical term. As a matter of fact, a person who calls himself a Shabara doctor as well as a Dharma doctor explains the two categories of Nidana. The phrase uh, Bayari Dau Ko Ko in Sans Bata Ari Dati Shoba. Here is uh, Haribadar is uh, Bata and Dati. This is uh, um, used in the med sense of medical. And here, apatya in Sanskrit, apatya, this is a, something unwholesome as a food or drink in Pat 
speaker complained. The steward used uh, invitation with uh, this Nidana, so we can understand that uh, Nidana have some relationship with uh, disease or some medical practice. Of these two, uh, of these two, the Nidana related to the next word is more radical and in, in its essence, the Nidana is long belief, Mithya Tuba, according to Haribadra. To avoid this, one should follow and practice the preaching of jinas. More concretely, we must listen to the doctrine of Jainism every day and observe the five bars of beginning with the non-violence. Thus, here Nidana is intended both Jain mendicant as well as lay person. Next and the last Jain philosopher we discuss in relation with Nidana is the famous monk, uh, monk Skara Hemachandra, who was active during the uh, 12th century in Gujarat. Title as a Karikara Sarvajanya, or uh, an omniscient during the age of darkness, he composed various works covering a wide range of subjects. Among them, however, Hemachandra used the word Nidana in the few works. Here, we select two works. One is Turisha Sharaka Purusha Charitra and Yoga Shastra with old commentary. In Turishasti, we come up across the word Nidana about uh, in about 30 verses, which makes a part of about 30,000 verses as a whole. Though Haribadra, uh, sorry, though Hemachandra uses this word in various meanings, mostly it occurs with reference to the penance and desire in the future. To quote an example, Ati Ibram Tapas Pepe Tapaso Ayan Pare Natsus Nanda Halsus Badaya Sasyan Nidanam Kitsa Akaro. Here we keep this English translation by Harry Johnson. He practiced a very severe penis and made a Nidana as a result of this penis. May I see the Nanda's abductor? Thus, we can say this Nidana in this context is used to denote the thought to obtain some state in the future as the fruit of one's austerity. This kind of thought naturally should be blamed, should be blamed and to be avoided. It is very interesting to observe that in the Trishasti, the word Nidana occurs three times with the verb aroch. This is the one of them. Again, I quote the translation by Helen Johnson. Afflicted with uh, grief as his wife kidnapped him, he practiced a severe penis and made Nidana for killing his wife kidnapper. He had his aunt died without confessing in the analogia, without confessing. The Nidana and and was born a powerful god in the heaven of Mahendra. This verb, I mean, uh, our Lord, with uh, its 
derivative form is used as a tec uh, technical term in discussion of atonement, and it means the confession as understand from the, this translation. A person will be reborn in the heaven because of making nidana and failing to confess it. Then how a person will be, will be if not failing or if he or she confess it? Then the three cases in the precious makes us suppose that nidana itself is an episode, but it may be amendable. Nidana also appears in Hemachandra's other another works on behavior on Jaina on Jainas titled Yoga Shastra with old commentary. In this treatise, the author uses the word this word nidana four times and of which twice in the sense of cause and two in the sense of something to be avoided. For our purpose, the latter is useful of the two cases once it appears in the old commentary on the bars of dealing with meditation. Here, Arutam Raudram Apadi Nam Papa Karmo Karma Upadeta Kinto Upakari Danam Cha Pramada Charanam Tata. I skip, I skip uh, in English translation. translation. Uh, in the old commentary, uh, the author says that there are four kinds of Ardhan Dhyana and the fourth, um, he mentioned Nidana in this way. Devendra Chakrabarti Adi Diva Pra Arta Na Rupam Nidanam Chaturtam. In the second case, Nidana is used in the context of discussion of Sarlekana. The bus 3151 reads in this way. I skip this. And here I quote the uh, oldest translation. He who is a distinct is the ambrosia of the liberation. He has no anticipation either in this world or in the next, either in the life or death. Here, we clearly understand that Nidana is a type of desire for social position or ha happiness in the future as a result of one's own penance, and that should be avoided. So, we just have a, uh, have a look at the word of Nidana in Buddhism, while we have a explored that in general somehow widely, leaving that in Hinduism untouched. The basic meaning of this word must be a cause of something abstract as well as concrete shown in Buddhist texts and some Jain works. From the point of ethical values, it denotes a natural and neutral one. The Buddhists did not expand this usage nidana too much. On the other hand, the giants have extended the meaning of, of this as to the po put it on the central portion of the religious doctrine, a cause of something bad and to be avoided. Result caused by the Nidana is, in this sense, may be regarded as abstract, but Nidana itself must be abstract or not concrete one. In other words, Nidana is a kind of thought which we may have not and which we have ne negative body itself. This is important because a result which we take place from the concrete cause may be prevented in other ones, but the, that from the abstract one like a nidana must be 
difficult to avoid. The giant both mendicant and lay person have paid full attention to avoid nidana, which must hinder the, their way of religious practice and way to liberation. As typically shown in Tatvata Sutra and commentaries on it, the usage of nidana can be divided in, into three groups besides the, those common to Buddhism. First, every thought in general and every thought in practice of penance and that during the meditation. The first one is very common even our daily life. Judging from the examples, the giant try to avoid the having desire to a political high position. The second and third types of nidana concern the religious practices. We suppose there are many causes that prevent us from the practicing the penas and meditation. Among them, inner ones or every thought in our mind are most difficult to avoid. The Jain philosophers fully understand this and therefore they give importance to to this with name of Nidana. This evening, we have referred it to some texts concerning the topic among the numerous works. Further research on the Nidana, we must study the other various texts. Among them, here, two groups should be mentioned. One is Digamba text, and another is Shirabaka Acharya text. Today, we mainly use the text by the Shvetambara writers for our discussion. If we study the Gambara text, such as the Shatkanda Agama with commentary, they will give us a useful information on this topic. On Shravaka Achara, we have a copious monograph by Williams, which contains a reference to the, our topic. To, Develop his contribution, we compare the reference with the Nidana concerning mendicant activities. To conclude this lecture, I would like to quote Professor A.K. Warder's remark to the Nidana when he described the stories of Samurai Chakaha by Hadvadra. I quote, the Nidana hypothesis thus seeks to explain the irrational behavior which has no apparent cause, and it, alas, is so common in human life as to make the theory very convincing. Thank you very much for your kind attention. May I have? May I have? Uh, I have one hope, not desire. <laughs> this time I prepared uh, my draft with the help of many uh, researches by various countries. And uh, it's uh, I, was, I get uh, much help from our uh, uh, contemporary researchers. As you know, uh, in Japan also, there are many, not many, but some uh, Jain researchers. Uh, some of them will read the paper tomorrow. And almost of them are uh, younger than me at least. So I hope all of you here kindly listen, listen, to, uh, listen to my lecture, though it must be very painful. <laughs> all of you help and encourage our young research, uh, research or scholar in Japan. That is my hope. Thank you very much. Thank you.
very much indeed, Professor Pudinaga. Uh, now I would like to invite everyone to enjoy a beverage without desire, of course. <laughs>